welcome back everyone. I'm very excited to bring you guys the start to finish basement dig out on the super cramped and tiny basement that we did recently. You can just see by the intro shot here just how close quarters and just cramped this whole space is. They literally have to dig tunnels to get to where they need to be. So really fun project that we did and I'm just going to be hopping in and out of here just doing a little voiceover explaining the process that we use, what's going on in a certain shot, all that good stuff. Really just to give some context as to the bigger picture of this job. So hopping straight into this, you can see that the guys are making quick work of all this crawl space material. You know, they're getting this stuff out, getting some room in there so they can walk around and just be able to work more efficiently because when it comes to these basement digouts the biggest thing that we've noticed is is the faster you're able to get a staging area set or a room where multiple people can walk around without getting in each other's way that's when you really start to see the efficiency go through the roof here so really this first stage is very vital on how fast we get this job done in the later months or weeks of this project so switching angles here, you can see just how much dirt is in this basement. So they still have a while to go on this crawl space area. There's just probably four to five feet of dirt that they got to move through. Maybe three to four feet, I want to say. It's a better estimate. And you can see barely back there, they have a conveyor that they're using. So this is how we're able to do this pretty quickly. If we were to use buckets or wheelbarrows, you know, and just like hand maneuver all this stuff out of the basement, this would take ages to do, especially with four people. So having this conveyor system down in the basement is a super, super nice way to get just a large amount of dirt out quickly. And so a little bit more context on this, which is really fun to talk about. So we have around two to three guys on this crew right now for the beginning of this project. And then, so two of them were down here, as you can see right here. Two of them were down here moving all the dirt out from the basement. And then we have a third guy that's on the outside with a wheelbarrow or a mini excavator, depending on how much room we have. But I think on this job, it was a little bit smaller. So he had a wheelbarrow and he would take all the excess dirt that they pump out and then he would wheelbarrow that over to a trailer, dump it in the trailer. And then every like 30, 45 minutes, once that trailer's full, he'll go run that over to a dump site and then dump it out and then come back and rinse and repeat. So it's a very effective little team maneuver we got going on here. Very efficient in terms of getting dirt out and getting all the stuff that we need in because as well as that if he needs to go grab some stuff like this wood he'll go and take the trailer and pick that up at Home Depot Lowe's or wherever that is and then you can see here this is another great thing so now that we're starting to do some structural destruction on this job it's very important that we have some you know some supporting pillars and stuff just to make sure the structural integrity of the home is kept so you can see as they started tearing that brick wall out they made sure to brace the ceiling where it once was that way this whole house doesn't cave in on us so safety is very important it's priority number one when we're working down here now switching angles again you can see that the guys are slowly starting to wake, make their way back here and they're actually forming up a little bit for a concrete pour here so that's what they're doing here they're pouring like a little footer right now i think this changes later on in the plans the plans change but right now they're just pouring a little footer back there for some extra structural support which i was talking about so we do both footers and then the um the frames and the columns and all that with wood just to make sure that the structural integrity isn't lost during this process it's a little bit blurry on this camera i got a little dirty and then the light is shining right into it. But you can see here, he's starting to tunnel that way. That was a really good angle of that. So that's what I was talking about before with the tunnels. You really got a tunnel where you want to be, and then you can start to expand that tunnel outwards. Switching angles here to the other side, this is the basement section of the basement, previous basement. You can see it's a walkable, livable, I wouldn't say livable, but walkable basement. And so this whole thing is just going to be turned into a nice nine foot basement. So this crawl space area that we see now, and that basement area is going to be turned into just one large basement. So that was the goal of this project. That's what the client, the customer, I should say, wanted. They wanted a bigger basement for livable, you know, living rooms, rooms, all that good stuff. Coming over here is another good angle of the footers that they're pouring. You can see those on the right side there. They're forming them up and getting them poured. And then switching back here, you can see it's very important too to clean up as we go. So you can see that they moved all the bricks out so they're not stumbling over them and they got a clear footpath. That's also very important. You don't want to be stumbling over things or hitting your head on anything. But yeah, the guys move pretty quick here. And the time lapse doesn't do it justice. But even like when it's real time, the guys are moving pretty quick getting this stuff done, which is really awesome to see. We've done probably around six, seven, or eight of these by now. I want to say seven or eight is a better estimate. 
and we're just getting faster and faster the guys are just a veteran crew now so when it comes to these basement digouts they know exactly what to do the process the most efficient ways to do things so that's really fun to see so the more that you do of anything of course the better you get at it so that's where we're at with the whole basement digouts but you can see here some real progress getting made right here that whole cross space area is pretty much just flat and smooth now that's a really large area for them to store things walk around all that good stuff so now you can see if we wanted to we could even fit like a five man or a six man crew down here to really speed things up which we do do in like the later weeks and months of this project when there's a lot more room but you can see here some other contractors are coming in here to look at plumbing and electrical so if you see people that don't look like our usual crew, that's usually who they are. Just some other contractors coming in and doing whatever they need to do. Over here on the left, you can see that we actually use concrete bags, or we did. So the cool thing about this, a little update for you guys in terms of the business, we recently got a pump truck. So before, which is this video, we used concrete ready mix bags to pour the footers and all that good stuff. But now, which actually we still might do, depending on the pump truck situation. So for the smaller things, like these little footers that they poured, we'll still use the ready mix. But on the larger, bigger footers that we work with, we're actually going to start to implement a pump truck every now and then because we finally got one of those. So it's going to speed up the workflow when it comes to pouring concrete a little bit, which is awesome. But you can see here on the left side that concrete, the ready mix I was talking about, we use a whole ton of this stuff when it comes to pouring the footers. It's crazy just how much like volume of concrete we use for these basement digouts. It's really cool to see. So coming in over here, you can see just they're starting to scatter all the materials and supplies around here. That's the, another great thing about such an open space is you have all this storage that doesn't get in your way anymore like it once did at the beginning of the project. And then you can see the guys are still working in that crawl space back there. Just pouring some more footers, excavating dirt, all that good stuff. Usually at this point of the project, it's mostly the same thing for a couple weeks. You know, excavate dirt, pour some footers, excavate dirt, pour some footers, all that jazz. So you can see, switching back to this camera, like I said before, just getting rid of all this excess material and then pouring the footers shortly after. And unfortunately, he pointed the light straight at the lens, so it's got a little bit of glare on it, so sorry about that, but you can still see a little bit of what's going on here. You can see really here how they're putting up all their framework and structural stuff. You can see just all the columns and pillars that are just supporting the roof right now. That's really cool to see. And then here you can see they're getting ready to finish up this crawl space area from what I can presume if I remember correctly. And yeah, you can see this. So a little bit more about this project in particular while they're doing just the same stuff over and over. So the goal with this one was to create a nine foot living area in the basement. So the previous basement, this section that we're looking at right now, I think I wanna say was seven foot to six foot. So you can walk in there, right? But your head is like brushing the ceiling and if you were to jump, your head would get stuck in the insulation. So that's not fun. So the homeowner wanted to bring this down to nine feet, so like three feet down from where that original basement floor is and then that's a whole different you know term that's a whole different level of space that you have once that happens because now you can jump you can sprint and jump and you can't even touch the ceiling so it makes a huge difference in terms of the liv livability of that space so that's just the context of this job we're taking it from a six foot basement and a crawl space down to a nine foot basement and under the whole entire house so the footprint of the house is just getting doubled pretty much with this basement extension which is great to see coming back over here to this angle we get a little bit more of a view of what they're doing over here same thing you know just moving out all this dirt getting all the little footers poured they need to and coming back over here, you can see they widen this brick wall up while we were talking about the other stuff. So you can see as we start to take things away from this job site, you can see just how open it starts to become and just like almost get a glimpse of the final product. So you'll be surprised just how open this thing is in the final product once all the walls are removed and all the excess pillars that we don't need anymore and we put in the final pillars that actually support the structure of the home. You'll, you'll see just the difference it makes. It's really cool to see. That's probably my favorite part of the series. But you can see here, just doing some cleanup work, getting rid of bricks, getting rid of dirt, all that good stuff, the usual. You can see they have like a little frame that they built for the conveyor right there. That conveyor, I can't stress enough, is vital to this operation. Makes all the difference. So 
So like I said before, this portion of the dig out usually is pretty repetitive. It's just a lot of the same thing over and over. Dig out a little, excavate a little area, pour your footer, and then excavate another little area, pour your footer, all that good stuff. So it can be quite monotonous, but it's worth it in the final product. And it's nice for the guys too, because it's not, it's really just, it's a really simple process in terms of like what you have to do. It's not super technical or anything. There's like, there's certain things that you have to keep in mind, you know, with like safety, structural integrity, all that stuff. Like you have to think about the structure above you. But for the most part, it's a very simple, repetitive process, which makes it super easy for the guys in terms of like remembering and getting this done quickly. Switching back over here, you can see that they're slowly digging away at that brick wall as they go. You can see he just put up a metal pillar right there. I don't know if you caught that, but that's going to help stabilize the home. So when they actually tear down this brick wall for real, it's not going to just cave in on itself and all the weight. So this yellow stuff right here, if you're not familiar, that's vapor barrier. So right now they're just using it to keep all the all their uh, storage stuff. So like the re ready mix and stuff off the dirt floor. You know, just keeping it clean and all that good stuff. But pretty much to explain what vapor barrier is, if you're not familiar, we put that underneath the final slab of the home and it just keeps moisture and water vapor from entering the basement over the years. So it's just a moisture preventer, pretty much super, super simple. It's pretty much just a plastic sheet. Not entirely sure what it's made of, but that's the job. So coming over here, they have dug the floor down to the final height. That's the nine foot on that crawl space side. So you can see just how like short they become compared to the guys up here that were just sitting on the basement side. So it makes a huge difference in terms of just like the feel of the room. And it makes it feel so much more large when you're down there, which is really cool. And especially when we get other jobs where it's like a three foot dig down. So not even anything crazy like this where we're removing a whole crawl space. Because you have to keep in mind that was a lot of dirt that the guys just removed from that crawl space area. But when we're doing just those three feet below or we're just excavating three feet down of dirt, it's just it's super quick, super easy. And it still makes a huge difference in terms of just the feel of the basement. And we actually have a job like that coming up right after this one start to finish. So if you're... If you're watching this video and that one's out, go ahead and watch that one after this one. It'll be a really good watch as well. So now that we're getting into the footer part, so now that they've excavated, now it's time for the footers. So you can see this form that they just built, that's our footer form. So that little section at the top, that's where they're gonna pour in the quick creep. You can see that right here, they're pouring that in there. And then that's gonna form up our footer. And so the footer is the structural bit of the house. So that's gonna hold up the sides of the, the sides of the basement as well as support the overall weight of the home on the sides as well so this is the most crucial part you know you want your house to be stable you want it to be secure so the footers are what's going to do that so you can see all the wood coming in so they're putting footers everywhere right now they're getting those done and ready to go so super simple process like i said excavate footers vapor barrier pour your slab super simple it's just the manpower that's required. If you had one dude doing this, this would take you forever. But when you have a good crew of four or five guys coming in every week, it gets done pretty fast. It's not next week fast, but it's faster than one guy for sure. So you can see here the guys are putting up more forms. And then another really crucial part of this, you can't really see it from this angle, but you want to, you want to, with structural integrity in mind, you want to kind of do every other footer. I can't think of the word right now, I'm having a huge brain fart, but every other footer you want to do. So let me explain this. So if you look past the little conveyor belt that we got in the back, they're doing a footer and then they're leaving a gap with their dirt from the previous excavation that's still supporting the home so whenever they dig down and underneath the previous footer of this home there's still something supporting the weight in that area and that's going to be that huge just blob of dirt that they have so they do their footers on either side and then they'll come back when those have cured so they support the structure and then they'll go and remove that dirt pile and then they'll put the footer in that section 
And like I said, that's just for structural integrity to make sure that something is always supporting the weight of this home and you're not just like removing a whole wall and then having the house sink or collapse in on itself. So here's a good example right here where they're digging that footer hole. You can kind of see them. He's hopping in and out of that hole. To the left and right of him is dirt. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. So they're doing it in a sequence as I guess the word for it. So every other... They do every other footer, kind of A, B, A, B, A, B. And then another crucial part about this is you can see just how many forms and like pieces of wood the guys have down here as well as the, you, there's just a bunch of junk pretty much in this basement. So it's really crucial too that the guys have a really open area that way they have plenty of room for storage pretty a good amount of space for walking around and doing some work all that good stuff because once you start to get into the footer section that's where you know your forms come in the concrete comes in and you need a place to store this down here and you don't want it to be so cramped that you can't get to any of your footers or do any work so it's very important at the beginning that's why we try to just get everything in a nice big room and then from there that's when we start to do all the logistical stuff You can see here, here's another angle. You can see just all the quick creep bags that we use on this job. This is two stacks on either side. You can see one on the basement side and then the crawl space side. And then we just tear through these things. So I think on this footer right here that they're pouring now, they use that whole stack to pour that footer, which is amazing. They're there and then they're gone. As quick as that. My neighbor just pulled up with a loud car, so if you heard that, I apologize. I'm trying to keep it nice and quiet for the video for you guys. All right, this is a really good angle showing the crawl space area. So you can see the difference in heights right here on the right side. You can see the previous basement height, and then you can see the new height on the left. Well, no, not anymore. They just put a giant pile of dirt, but you get what I mean. Now you can see here, this is what I'm talking about in terms of like spacing and crampedness. You can see just like how cramped, even though we like were able to clean this out and you know, make it very open, it quickly just became very cramped again, just with all the material that we need to use to do all the concrete work. So you can see here just more quick creep going on switching back to this angle pretty much they're getting really close to finalizing the footers down there in the crawl space area that's going to be that first section that they start with so you can see all the forms and stuff that they're putting up all that good stuff and this is what i'm talking about when in terms of like it's a very repetitive process you know like they're just doing the same thing over and over on each individual wall and like I said, it's very good for them because it's easy to remember what you're doing. But in terms of, you know, like all this other stuff, it can get pretty repetitive, which we try to switch our crews out just so they're not doing basement digouts all the time. Because if you were to do these every single day for a year, you'd get pretty burnt out pretty fast. They're definitely labor intensive. Switching back angles here again, you can see finishing up the footers on all these sides here you can see that form that they just sprayed and got wet so nothing really the concrete doesn't stick to it but yeah looks looking fantastic i will say and you can see here this is a, this is a really good angle to do the comparison from i'll probably flash this section up at the end just so you can really see like the before and after because this is does a good job of showing just how cramped this previous basement was compared to the final version which it's night and day honestly and then since they're just doing the same thing over and over here i guess i'll talk to you a little bit more backstory on this project so we handle so we are the subcontractor for some builders you know so we don't finish the basements we just do the concrete and the excavation part of this so once the concrete's poured and the final slab is we're out of here but 
you know the other company they'll come in and they'll finish the basement you know add carpet add in the drywall add in the framing all that good stuff make it a finished livable basement but that means they also hire out electricians and plumbers and all that good stuff so on this project there's actually going to be a heated floor which is really cool it's the first one that we've videoed of that so it's cool to see that aspect of it so this one has a heated floor and for about three weeks unfortunately they were having some issues with i don't know who it was whether it was the electricians the plumbing whoever was handling the heated floor unit you'll see you'll probably see it i'll point it out later in the video but it was taking forever to get installed and they had to do like a bunch of plumbing and wiring and stuff so for three or four weeks we just weren't on this job so that really slows down progress in terms of getting this thing finished so it's really just a craft between all the subcontractors and all the you know contractors in general who are down here to work in tandem because like i said before when it's a super cramped space like this you know it's not only our guys that are in here some days like we have electricians and plumbers who are messing with stuff as we're doing our thing so this can quickly get filled up with like seven eight people and when you have a space like this it's very important that no one's getting in each other's way and slowing anything down you can see here on the right side, just to butt into the little exposition I was going on, they're tearing down the final brick wall. And just like that, this this basement is huge now. Just complete night and day difference when you tear down this wall. It's just no more separators. You can see from corner to corner and each corner. And it's just a whole different basement now. So that's really cool to see. But continuing on, for like three to four weeks, we weren't able to work on this, which was a little bit frustrating, you know, when you're trying to get stuff done and you're like amped up to, you know, just get it finished. But nonetheless, the final product spoke for itself. Once that heated floor was in, stuff started moving again. Well, the heated floor unit, I should say. There's this big control box that's used to control all the uh, liquid and stuff. Like I said, I'll point that out in the, in the future once we see it. But yeah, it's, a, it's an art working in such close quarters, especially when you have other people down there that isn't your company or your crew. Switching back to this angle, you can see just how open it is like I was talking about. You can see from corner to corner pretty much, which is really cool. And then once you bring down that right side as well in terms of the floor, it's going to be even bigger. You can see in that back right corner, they're doing some more footers. And then they got the blue vapor barrier this time. You'll remember that the last vapor barrier we had was yellow. There's no difference. I think it's just branding. One brand's different than the other. They do the same thing. So they're putting that. They're tucking that behind the footer that they're about to pour. And then they're putting in their rebar. And then they're pouring the concrete. And then that gives you a finished footer. And like I said before, that's just to prevent any moisture from seeping into the basement. You know, you don't want moisture damage like mold or mildew, anything like that. You want to keep it nice and dry down there. You can see the guys are putting up and taking down some more pillars, you know, opening it up and like just restructuring the structural bit of this basement. If you haven't already, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Uh, we'd really love it if you liked and subscribed, you know, let us know how we're doing in the comments below. Really helps us out, motivates us to make more content for you guys, you know, just these explainer videos are really fun to do. It's really cool to share our craft and have people that are interested in it. So, like I said, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. But cutting in here, you can really see stuff starting to move back here in that right corner. They're starting to slowly dig into that basement section, slowly excavate that floor height. And then this is probably when the electrical and plumbing issues started happening, where we took this hiatus for a little bit. I think it's once we started to dig into this basement section is when we had four weeks off of this job. I'll try to point it out. And that can really kill the momentum too. So it's kind of sucks when this happens just because, you know, the guys are getting a feel for it. We're moving fast. We're getting stuff done. You know, the guys are gung-ho. It's, it's go, go, go time. And then it's just nothing for four weeks. And you kind of forget where you're at, that kind of thing. You can see all the quick creep that they brought in again. Like I said, a metric ton of this stuff is used on these basement digouts. And it's really nice too, just because, you know, you can store it down there and then you can mix in the wheelbarrow like the guys are doing here and then you pour it on site. So it's a super effective process. It's really quick and speedy. Because the reason that we use the quick creep on these two on the footers and not like a pump truck is just because, you know, like they're not pouring every footer at the same time. It's a sequence. 
and so having the freedom you know of them to like not rush because the pump truck is coming and take their time a little bit and you know better sequence these footers is is crucial so the quick is very helpful in that process I want to say they're getting pretty close to finishing up the footers on that right side over there on the crawl space side I want to say this project took probably 40 to 50 footers pours in terms of like setting up the form and then pouring a footer so even though it's a small basement you're still doing a lot of work You can see just how clean it is now too, especially, so another big thing that plays into just like how big the basement feels is just like how decluttered the floor is. So you can see right here that with nothing on the floor and it being super smooth right there, the basement looks massive. And so I noticed this the other day whenever I was at one of the job sites, there's a bunch of like rubble and rock. Even though the floor was generally flat, there's no like, there really wasn't any product or anything like that. You could just tell how just like open it was after they removed all that material and stuff. Making quick work of that quick creep bag as you can see they just like blow through these things. Love that so much. Love seeing that especially in time-lapse form. Time-lapse videos are very fun. Okay, sweet. So to hop off on another tangent since they're doing this. So this is about when we hopped off the job for four weeks when we started getting to this basement excavation. You can see here, just hand tools, just digging this stuff away, removing this basement floor finally. And I want to say right about here is when we stopped because this is when they started messing on the right side yeah right here so you can see on this right side here they just took down all this stuff so the, the heater the floor heater is on that right side you might be able to see it a little bit better from this angle so that white wall that's on the right side that's where the previous water heater was i want to say some kind of just like water pump or water heater some electrical stuff that's where the heater for the floor is going to go I don't know what you call that unit. I'm not an electrician or a plumber, so I got no clue. So don't quote me on that. But that little unit's going to go over there on the right side, and that controls just the temperature of the heated floor. But this was the point when we had to take a huge break just because I, could, I could, couldn't tell you if they couldn't get that unit in, if it took them forever to get the unit in or whatever, or what it was. But you see they had to do a bunch of work to accom accommodate for this thing. These are a bunch of electricians and plumbers coming in right now getting everything wired up and fixed and I sped this up of course so this doesn't even highlight how long we waited so this is like a month and a half condensed into two minutes so for us this was an eternity but for you guys it's like I said two minutes which is nice you can see they just brought in a bigger support pillar right there that was to secure the home pretty much you know keep it stable nice big metal beam it's as solid as they get you can see just how messy this place gets again. And they completely, let me see, I'm trying to tell if the concrete floor, I think it's just dirt on the concrete floor over there. So they haven't excavated that at all yet. <coughs> oh, bless you. I'm not cutting that out of the video. You guys get to enjoy that little sneeze. Yeah, so that right side, that where that water heater is, so it was a water heater and like some other item i don't know what that thing next to the water heater is that's where that unit's gonna go so you'll see it when they bring it in it's like brand new and pretty looking but it took forever to get that thing in which was a little frustrating but at least the job's done now and it looks great so you love to see it For the most part, too, you might have noticed that the electricians and plumbers pretty much came in when we weren't there. So sometimes they do come in while we're working, but for the most part, we try to like relegate our guys on the job when our guys need to be there and then have the other contractors come in on their own time. That way, 
no one's getting in each other's way that much and then you see here on the left side a huge change they got rid of all the temporary columns and supports and they finalized it with that metal beam running on the ceiling and then they have the nice metal pillar right there holding that up from the middle so that really opened the space up as well you don't have as much many things like obscuring your view and then right here is when this new oh Okay, yeah, so you see it, it, that thing with the blue tape on it on the right, that's that floor heater that I was talking about. So that's what slowed us down. Now that you can see that that's in, we're back and we're ready to get to business. So the guys started doing some excavation here on the basement side. And just like that, it's pretty much cleared. So you can see here just how open this bit is now. So we had a little bit of a skip for a week. I think the camera didn't record for a week and that's when they just brought down that basement floor. But you can see here just how, it's just a big box now, honestly. So huge amount of space. You can just see how much storage room there is now, places to put stuff, all that good stuff. And we have an even bigger crew now since we have more space. We have a crew of seven, I think down here now, six or seven. And this really speeds up the workflow in terms of getting stuff done. You can see we got two crews. One's excavating all the material, you know, and then we got another crew of two or three pouring footers. So this just really expedited the finishing product here. We were able to get this done pretty quickly. You can see here they're excavating all the excess material and that's making a huge difference. Just it's super flat now, you know, there's nothing in the way. Cutting back over here, you can see a little bit closer up of the footer work they're doing. So these are smaller footers. So the nice part too about the basement extensions when we go lower is since we're only going down three, four feet, you know, nothing super intense. The footers are way smaller. So they're way easier to make forms for. They're way easier to pour, way quicker to pour, all that good stuff. So the basements, the previous basements into new basements, those are really fun to do just because they're so quick versus on the crawl space side you've seen that those were like five foot footers that we had to pour so those take a little bit longer than the basement side here's another really good angle of that showcasing just how small that footer is on the right side it's probably like three feet i want to say max height super open as well you can just see how much walking room there is i already mentioned that but it's always cool to see compared especially compared to the start you know especially on this one when you had like a super tight corridor for the basement and then you had this like a crawl space able to combine both rooms and almost double the floor plan of your house i'd say it's worth it here's another great view of just all the material that's stored down there right so since we have all this room you can see that all the material stored on the on the corners and on the walls and it's just really staying out of the way of the working area and then when they do need to go somewhere they clean it all up and move it you notice as well that we got rid of the staircase going down there and now it's a ladder so that really helped the overall space and volume making that feel a lot bigger than it is So like I mentioned before, you have these periods where it's just rinsing and repeating. So here on the basement side, they're just doing footers and getting rid of the final excavation and all that. And I think they're honestly finished. I think they just poured all the footers right here. So I think they're just gonna start cleaning it up. Yep, okay, so this is where it starts to speed up. So right now they're putting in the perimeter drain. This catches any groundwater that's trying to seep its way into the basement and just puts it into a sump pit so it can be drained. That way it just doesn't go into your basement and it goes into just one allocated area that if it does like rain a lot or whatever, there's a flood, it goes into the sump pit and not your basement. So that's always a plus to have. And then they're gonna cover that up. You can see that right there. And then here's a really good angle. So you can see just how open this is now. Super big difference compared to the start. This is the other contractors coming in, in here doing some plumbing. So this isn't us, but you can see here letting them do all their plumbing and stuff. And it's very important that they get this right, you know, because once we pour that concrete floor, that's concrete. So that's going to be a bitch to rip up. So it's very important that these guys come in and they do the job correctly. That way we don't have to come in and tear up the floor that we just poured. Then you can see here they're putting in a little sump pit of their own for their plumbing. Like I said, I'm not a plumber, so don't quote me on that. That might be something entirely different than a sump pit, but looks like a sump pit to me. 
So you can see here, there's finishing all this up, getting it looking nice. Can't tell you much about what's going on here just because I'm not a plumber. So all I know is he's laying pipe and making sure water flows. That's all I got for you. But that unit on the right, you can see here, that's going to play a key part. Oh, man, it's gone. But that's going to play a key part in the next part here. You'll see all the tubing that goes into a heated floor. It's going to be really cool to see that part, especially since we haven't filmed that before. You guys are going to get a little insight onto that, which is really sweet. So you can see here, just finalizing all their plumbing and stuff before they cover it up and get it ready. And it's pretty cool to see this stage too because it's kind of like the under part of the actual basement finish. So it's really cool to see like what is going on underneath your basement slab, underneath the slab. And then, you know, you got your rebar. If you do rebar on your floor, if you got a heated floor, all the tubes that are crawling through your concrete slab, you got your vapor barrier and then you got your plumbing. So it's really cool to see this part of the job they're kind of just like getting insight on what's happening in your basement especially on the newer homes old homes it's probably just a concrete slab so you can see here they got all their tubing uh i'm gonna call that being tied up you can see it just poking through the floor there so they got all that finished they're starting to cover it up as you can see so we're getting really close to us coming back in here which is right about here so these are our guys they're making it look nice and flat getting it smoothed out getting it ready all that good stuff so you can see here and then we're putting in insulation as well we haven't done this on any other jobs as well so this is going to keep the heated floor efficient you know you don't want to heat your floor and just have it all seep away into the ground so this keeps it insulated and keeps it efficient so the homeowner isn't wasting money on heating this basement floor so this is really cool to see and then you can see once the vapor barrier comes in how big this basement feels just because of how flat it is and there's nothing really going on. Like I said before, this vapor barrier stops any of the moisture from coming up and ruining your floor, you know, no water damage. And then boom, right here is that heated floor or tubing I was talking about. You can see it just weaving its way across the whole entire floor. Really cool to see that. This black stuff that the guys are bringing in, this is expansion joint. So the concrete likes to expand once it's poured. So this pretty much just prevents it from cracking any of the footers that we poured or any of that. And it lets the concrete expand a little bit to put a nice seal around the perimeter. And then the guys are pouring a little slab right here just to prevent anyone from cracking the tubes right there. So when they hop down, they can do that without worrying. And then here, this is really cool to see. This is our pump truck. So we're able to use it on this job. So the guys are coming in here with the pump and they're gonna pour this floor super quick. You'll see how fast this is. They are in and they are out. That was probably 45 minutes on this pour. And boom, just like that, we're left with the finished product, which is this finished, I wanna say finished basement, but the structural bit of it, you know, all the concrete and stuff. So there you go. Compared to the beginning of this video, you can notice just how much room was added to this basement. In comparison we have a little bit of a different angle here to run this back you can take a look at that as well while I'm talking about it so you can see just the huge difference this has made in the floor space you know like I said before doubled the you know living area of this home so whatever they do with this whether that's bathrooms living rooms a big game area down here they have a lot more freedom in terms of a living space. So this was really cool to see. Let us know what you guys thought about this in the comments down below. I really wanna hear you guys' thoughts. All right guys, that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said before, leave a comment down below. Let us know how we did. And we hope to see you next week. Later.